Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Welcome to my video on using exponential triple smoothing in Excel. In this demonstration, I'll be using the forecast.ets function in Excel, which was first available in Excel 2016. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in this worksheet, you see I have a series of dates and they run from January 1st, 2014 to August 1st, 2015. And then let's presume that we are conducting a study and we are looking for participants for the study each month. And column B represents the number of participants that volunteered for the study on each day it was run, the first day of the month. So you can see over time, even though there are some months that have a lower number of participants than the month before, over time this number appears to increase. And we would like to use exponential triple smoothing to determine the predicted number of participants we'll have on a target date. And I've set that target date as January 1st, 2016. So I've already created a cell that has a label estimated number of participants. So in the cell below that, I'm going to start with the forecast.ets function. So it's forecast.ets. And you can see the first argument that it's looking for is the target date, which in this case would be cell D3. And then the values, I'll put a comma in, the values will be the participants. So B2 through B21. Another comma. The next argument is timeline. So that'll be the dates that correspond to the participants. And the remaining arguments for this function are optional. This is to show you what they look like. We have seasonality. And this is an optional value that is set to a default of 1 in which case Excel will detect seasonality automatically. If you were to place a zero here, Excel would not use seasonality and you would have a linear prediction. So we'll go ahead and put one. And then we can see the next argument that's optional is data completion. So with a zero value, we have missing values treated as zeros or with a one value, automatic completion uses linear interpolation. The default value here is one, and we have no missing values, so I'm going to put one. The last optional argument is aggregation, and this specifies the method that Excel will use to aggregate several values with the same timestamp. By default, this value is one, or average, so I'm going to put that in, one and then hit enter. And you can see the estimated number of participants that would be volunteering in the study as of 1-1-2016 is 55. Under the data tab, Excel has a feature that will produce another worksheet with this estimated number of participants and a graph. So if I select the dates and the participants and go to data then forecast sheet and hit enter you can see that it provides the estimated number of participants for several d dates into the future and also the lower confidence bound and upper confidence bound so if we go to options here we can select when the forecast will start. Uh, above the options, we can select when the forecast will end. We can set the confidence interval, in this case, 95%, which is the most common confidence interval. We can also specify seasonality, the timeline range, the values range, how we're going to fill missing points, and how we're going to aggregate duplicates. 
So I'm going to set the forecast end to a year past the original target date that I set. So it'll be January 1st, 2017. I hit create. And you can see it creates a new worksheet and it has a table here with the forecasted values and the forecasted lower and upper confidence bounds as well as this chart that has the predicted values and the lower and upper confidence bounds. So I'll add this to make this a little easier to see. Make this stand out a little more with a black background. And you can see here the lower confidence bound is in green and the upper is in purple. And the forecast here is in the middle in red. If we move back over to this table and scroll down a bit, we can see that for 1-1-2016, it's an estimate of 55 participants. And if we extend this another year to 1-1-2017, the estimate is 82. For the beginning of 2016, we can be 95% confident that the number of participants will be between 42 and 68. And for the beginning of 2017, 95% confident that the number of participants will be between 58 and 106. I hope you found this video on exponential triple smoothing in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.